Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. and I am back with another resin project. So, in case you were wondering, occasionally I do projects that don't have pink in them. Let's be honest, it's not very often because pink's my thing, but it's fall. You can't tell because I live in Alabama and I'm wearing shorts with ruffles on them and flip-flops, but in the rest of the world, it's getting cold. So we are going to do a fall project today, some cute little fall coasters to be exact, with some little cut file SVGs I made with my Cricut. I'm very excited about them. They may or may not have cheetah print pumpkins involved. So we're gonna jump right in because I want you guys to see how cute they turned out. So since we're not using pink, I have my colors to show you. For this project, I'm using a bronze which is the closest thing to orange that I own, okay guys? It looks actually very orange in the pumpkins and the coasters. Then we have some interference colors. So these are color shifting pigments and I used, it's kind of hard to tell with the lighting, but I use interference gold and interference red and I will show you close-ups of these um, with some pictures. Then we have our mold. I bought this one on Amazon. It's the same one I used to, to make our blush coasters a couple months back. So you can use it for many different projects. You're gonna need resin, you're gonna need gloves, you're gonna need your respirator and goggles. You of course need silicone cups and stir sticks, your trusty heat gun to pop any bubbles in that silicone mold so that your mold doesn't heat up and tear, which we don't like. And we're gonna get started. Fall, y'all. It's fall. Okay, guys, are you ready to get started? We're going to put our colors into our cups here. We're going to start with the interference red. This is a pigment powder, so it's actually like a powder. Okay, you're just going to put a little bit in each cup. The interference, of course, colors change colors. They're more of a shimmery kind of tone than a solid color, so they're really pretty. I've never worked with them by themselves, I always pair them over a more solid color and they just add some oomph. So here is the rose gold flakes and then we will finish it all up with a little bit of bronze metallic copper. Shake it up. Make sure you always shake your paints. I have learned that the hard way. Now we are going to make sure we pop any bubbles that we can in our big cup of resin that I already mixed using our heat gun. This is my little Wagner HT 400. I love it. And now for the resin. So for this project, I used about a hundred milliliters of the clear with rose gold flakes and that bronze color. And I only used about probably 30 to 50 milliliters of the interference red and the interference gold. You'll see when we start actually using the colors, but the gold ends up looking beautiful and the red is a little more muted. So I would probably use more gold if I was doing this project again and a little less red, but it's really up to you. Now we've got all our colors. We're going to mix them up, mix them up real good. You want to mix slowly from the bottom. This is sped up. Okay, guys, like this is not real speed. <laughs> that would be so many bubbles. <laughs> mix slowly from the bottom, scrape the sides. You want to mix your colors until you don't see any streaks left. If you're seeing streaks of color, it's not a hundred percent mixed. Of course, you don't have that with the flakes. So you just want to mix it till all the flakes are in. Now with the interference colors, even though they're different colors, they're all going to look white in your silicone cup. Don't ask me why. I don't understand it. That's just how they work. So make sure that you actually remember like which one's red and which one's gold. If you don't know, like keep the containers real close to the cup so that you know which is which. Perfect. All right, so now that we've got everything mixed up, we're going to go ahead and get started with our actual project. So let's move our cups over and bring in our silicone molds. This is a coaster mold that I got off Amazon. I think I already mentioned that. The link's down below. I love this mold because it's just not uniform. 
I don't know. There's something I like about that. But I've been using it a lot. So since it's not new and I have like eight dogs, I always start by making sure there's no dog hair on the silicone because y'all dog hair and silicone go together like peas and carrots. Like they just attract. Okay, perfect. So that takes care of all the lint, all the dust, all the dog hair, and we're going to start pouring. So we're going to start from the outside with that bronze color and we're just going to go all the way around the outside. And this is going to be you know, one of our two biggest colors, this and that clear with the rose gold flakes. So follow the outside, but it's going to be a lot of color. I kind of go around the outside probably twice for each one, making sure I've got quite a bit of color. There we go. You also don't want to run out of color. So I'm always a little conservative with the first pour. Perfect. Keep on going. If you're not confident about your pouring abilities, that's okay. I'm not either, and it's actually not that hard. But since silicone and resin work, like just keep some paper towels nearby if you need to clean up something you've dripped. And of course, the silicone makes for easy cleanup. Perfect. Now that you've got kind of a better understanding of how much resin you have. I'm just going back in and pouring a little more on each one. It's like when you have two kids and you have to cut a cookie evenly, like you don't want to run out of cookie with the first kid. All right. So now we're going to go in and we're just going to pour that clear with the rose gold flakes in the middle. I love this part because like you can see it just kind of pushes that bronze out and the way the two colors interact, like it's just so pretty. Perfect. We're going to do that in all four and we're going to leave a little bit of that resin in the cup, probably about a third of it because we'll use that at the end. Then I realized that there's not enough bronze in this one. So I came back and put a little more. Perfect, darling. Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to go in with the interference red and there we go. So you can see it like it is a color, but it doesn't like pop. It doesn't read as like a red red the same way as if you put interference red over like a white color, it really pops. But over this bronze, like you see it, but it does not pop. That's okay. We're just kind of stringing it into the mixture. We just kind of want it to blend with all those other colors and make that defined line between the two colors. Not as harsh. At least that's what I'm doing with it. You do you. Do whatever you want. This is what I want. Beautiful. All right. Last one. And then we'll switch to the gold and you'll see what I mean. Got quite a bit of red in that one. But that's okay. It looks pretty cool at the end. All right. Ready for the gold? Bam. Bam. It's not like dramatic, but it's much more visible as a gold than the red is. I think it looks awesome. Perfect. So I do get a little more liberal with my um, strings here, and I'm going a little bit more just all over the outside of the mold, not necessarily just where those two colors meet. I really want that gold to be like throughout the entire piece. Whereas the red was mainly just where the two seams were. Okay, so see how much color I have left over? I do another project with that because I have quite a bit left. All right, so now we're going to go in and we're just going to pour the clear in the middle. And it's just going to push all those colors out a little bit and it forces them to like blend together. It's just like, this is the magic. At least I think it's magic. It also gives us room in the middle that's really clear for our decals that we're going to put on in a minute. Oh, it's just so pretty. All right. Perfect. So now this is completely optional, but I wanted to go back in with my stir stick and just kind of, especially that big flake right there, just break it up a little bit, 
put them in a little better spot because I am coming back with decals on these. You need to be conscious of like what's under those decals. How are they going to be legible? <laughs> and so I'm just kind of breaking that up so it's not in one big clump. And then moving around the other flakes just a little bit so that it leaves that middle part with not quite as much of a clump and more of a spread out kind of defined flake. If that makes any sense. If you're not putting a decal over this, it's not as important, but I am and you should too because it turns out super cute. All right, so now we're going to cover this. We're going to leave it to cure for 24 hours and look how pretty they are. So now it's been 24 hours. Make sure you cover it because see, there's even a couple hairs on the tops of mine. Oh my God. I love popping these things out. Those hairs drive me nuts. I cover these babies, but my long haired cat just hair is like glitter at my house, guys. Oh, but they're so pretty. And I love how that bronze, when mixed with the red and gold, like it really reads like just a more pigmented, pretty orange. It still reads a little bronze, like don't get me wrong, but to me it reads more orangey bronze than just bronze. Perfect. Now you can leave these exactly like this if that's what you want, but I want to put decals on them. Pumpkin decals. So I'm going to grab my Cricut Maker. I uploaded my free SVGs. I'll leave a link for that below. I think I already said that. And we just cut it out. This is just um, permanent vinyl and a black. It's just very basic vinyl. And I'm just cutting it out with my fine point blade. This is sped up like 2000 times. So it does take a minute y'all, but I'm cutting out five or six decals. If you were only cutting out one, it would be much faster. Perfect. So now I'm going to weed those and we're going to use some transfer tape to put our decals on our coasters. Perfect. So here's our transfer tape. We're putting it right over that decal that we made. Hello, pumpkin. How cute would that be for a little kid? Something hello, pumpkin for their room. Oh, like a big sign. This is why I, I, I'm always making projects because everything I do just makes me want to do something else. All right, peel up that transfer tape. If you've not used a Cricut before, I have much more in-depth tutorials, but this is just a little preview of kind of how you do it. Now you're going to put that decal down, smooth it in place. You want to smooth everything down so that all those little pieces of vinyl stick. And now peel the transfer tape off and it will leave the vinyl behind. Now this is a permanent vinyl, so if you wanted to, you could just leave the coaster just like this. And it would be fine. But since it is a coaster, it's going to have glasses on it that are sweating. I decided to throw a quick top coat on these. I'll leave a link below to my video on how to top coat things because I am not going to worry about showing you how to do it on all four of these coasters because it's just so quick and easy. It takes like five minutes. Perfect. I just love how they turned out. Don't you guys? All right. Let's cut to the end. I'm going to show you guys how they turned out and my super secret project I did with all that extra resin I had. Let's go. All right, y'all. You ready for the close-ups? Look how pretty these turn out. So this is the main one I did on camera, and I am just obsessed. That bronze looks so orange after you add the gold and the red and the, the decal. Hello, pumpkin. Hello, Autumn. Welcome to our patch. How cute is that one? And it's fall, y'all, which is kind of what I've been saying this whole video. So I absolutely love how these turned out. And they're so easy to make. Like, if you've never done resin before, you can make these. So what I told you at the beginning is true. There are cheetah print pumpkins but these are not them. So I made all these SVGs. You can grab them for free down below, cut them out with your Cricut, put them on whatever projects you want. Um, and they all come in normal pumpkin 
or cheetah print pumpkin. But for these coasters, I ended up using the regular pumpkins, but I had extra resin and I made a matching tray with the cheetah print pumpkin. Look how pretty that turned out. So this is the exact same materials as this. I literally used the leftover resin from this project to make this tray. And then I added a bigger pumpkin to the middle. I don't have a specific tutorial for this tray, but I made the exact same tray in purple a few months back, and I will link to that tutorial below. Just use the colors from these coasters. You're all set. All right, y'all, if you are ready for fall, like I am, hopefully you have cold weather. I love fall, but you can keep the cold weather like I still live in Alabama, okay? There's a reason for that. I hope you're having a great time. I'll talk to you later. Bye.